This is the Asus VivoBook 15. Let's check it out and see just how much value you can get out of a $250 laptop. Stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome to Affordable Tech. I'm David, and I provide videos showcasing the capabilities of budget-friendly tech. So if you're new here and you're a student on a budget, or if you're just someone who appreciates saving money, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. First and foremost, this laptop is $250 at Walmart right now. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how long the deal will last, but if you're interested, make sure to check the link below to see if it's still available. They state it's marked down from $349, so you'll be getting a full $100 off of this laptop while the deal lasts. Okay, so let's go over the specs. It has an APU, which is a CPU with uh, integrated graphics, and the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 3 3200U with Vega 3 graphics. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of SSD storage, and a claimed battery life of 8 hours. As you saw, all that came in the box was a pretty slim charger, the laptop, and two manuals. So firstly looking at the laptop itself, it honestly doesn't look bad. The build quality feels good, it has a good weight to it, and the display actually doesn't flex as much as I initially expected for a laptop this cheap. The top of the case is metal with an inlaid plastic Asus logo, and practically everything else is good quality plastic. The sides and keyboard area have a slightly textured design, but it's still smooth. The bottom is a plastic plate with rubber feet and a few cutouts for airflow and speakers. It also has an ergo lift hinge, which honestly is really cool in my opinion. It actually makes a lot of sense to me when putting it to use. As you can see, when you open the laptop, the top panel slides underneath the bottom panel and it causes the bottom to lift up at a slight angle, which makes typing a little bit more convenient. Like I said, this is a pretty cool feature. So let's go ahead and dive deep into each feature specifically. Firstly, starting with the screen. It has a 15.6 inch 1080p display, but the colors are meh. The viewing angles side to side are pretty good, but the thing that sticks out the most to me are the vertical viewing angles. Here's an example of an issue that I saw, I'm assuming because of the viewing angles. There seems to be like some sort of pixelation on my YouTube banner logo, and here you can see it compared to my MacBook. It looks like when you reach a high enough point, uh, the pixelation goes away, but at that point, the screen just looks overly white. But while using the laptop and having it set up in, in a stationary position, the viewing angle won't be too much of a problem because you won't be moving the laptop too much. Overall, the display does its job of being, well, just a display. But don't expect to be impressed or anything. Now, on to the keyboard. The keyboard is backlit and has a three brightness setting, which is super practical and it looks really good. Uh, the key travel is 1.4 millimeters, which is quite a bit further than my 2013 MacBook Pro. Here's a quick audio sample of me typing on both of these keyboards. So the Asus is deeper pitched and it has a slightly more clicky feeling, but it has less of a clicky sound. And the Mac is higher pitched, but it has more of a clicky sound, but less of a clicky feeling. I think the reason why the keyboard on the Mac sounds a little higher pitched is because the keys are pretty loose. Here's a comparison of audio as to what I mean. So as you heard, most of the sound coming off the Mac is due to the loose keys. But as of now, I do prefer the quietness and the clickiness feeling of the Asus. So for the keyboard, the key travel is good and it overall looks and feels pretty great. Now onto the trackpad. Nothing too special here, it really is just a trackpad, uh, except for the fingerprint reader in the top corner. But double tapping is nice for highlighting text and you can single tap as a click. So it works and functions like a good trackpad. The fingerprint sensor, I'm pretty sure you can use it to autofill uh, like passwords on the internet, but I currently just use it to unlock the device. The fingerprint reader is a really nice feature to have on just a $250 laptop. So let's take a look at the port selection. On the left side, we have two USB 2.0 ports, and on the right side, we have the charging slot, a USB 3.1 port, an HDMI, a USB-C, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. So that was pretty much it for all of the design and features of this laptop. So let's go ahead and start testing it out to see how well it actually functions. So the first thing you need to do in order to download programs is actually take it out of S mode. I was unaware that Windows had an S mode and I was kind of confused as to why I wasn't able to download Chrome, but following a few steps and going through a simple process, you're now able to download programs. So let's start off with the simple things such as just web browsing. Having a few 
few tabs open on Chrome is not too big of a deal, so it handles simple browsing pretty well. It also runs Google Docs very, very well. I ended up typing the whole script for this laptop on Google Docs on the Asus. Just going through, I didn't really have any issues, any lag. Uh, there, there wasn't any problem using Google Docs. So if you're wanting to type papers with a really cheap laptop, then that's something to consider. Everything seems to work fine as far as simple web browsing goes. Watching YouTube videos, it works well, uh, as well as Amazon shopping with a few tabs open. Sometimes the web pages occasionally take a little while to open, um, but that may just be my internet speed. But nonetheless, overall, just using the browser, it works well. Now let's test the speakers. The speakers are bottom facing, which is kind of unfortunate if you're using your laptop on your bed or in your lap, because it kind of mutes the sound when you're covering the speaker grills. But that being said, when this laptop is sitting on a desk like this, the speakers actually function surprisingly well. Overall, they're pretty crisp and clean and they get to a fairly high volume. There's not really any distortion as far as I can tell, but the bass end is kind of lacking. That's totally expected. Now let's see if we can try to test some games. Obviously, if you're looking to spend $250 on a laptop, it's definitely not your main concern to be gaming on this thing. But that being said, it is nice to know that it is capable of something uh, even if it's not much. Here's an example of my younger brother playing Doom Dio. He really enjoys this game. Uh, I don't really know too much about it, but what I do know is that it is a web-based game and it functions really well. Next, let's try out Minecraft. Honestly, it runs this pretty great. Most of the stuff like fancy settings for clouds and shadows are on, and it's set to render a distance of eight chunks. With these settings, it was actually able to stay pretty consistent at 60 FPS, and I was fairly surprised with this. Uh, it would only occasionally drop down to 40 or 50, but other than that, it was almost a 100% consistent 60 FPS. If you're unaware, you're actually able to connect an Xbox One controller to Windows PCs, and it functions just as it would on a console. So that's what we were using here. All right, and just for fun, here's me attempting to play CSGO. Of course it doesn't perform well or to the point to where it would be playable, and that's really okay because playing games is really just not the purpose of this laptop. Next, let's talk about battery life. So Asus claims it can last up to eight hours, which I think it's probably possible, but with my test, I left mine on best performance setting, so I only got about four to five hours. On top of that, I was consistently downloading links, I had a few tabs of Google Chrome open, and I was consistently searching through YouTube analytics and and email. So take that for what it is, but I don't think four to five hours is necessarily bad. It's just not too great, but it's not difficult to keep it charged up. All right, so now let's quickly mention upgrades. I wanna mention that this laptop only has one RAM slot, which lowers the performance slightly because it's single channel instead of dual channel memory. That being said, you can actually upgrade the RAM on Amazon or eBay for around 27 bucks. You can also upgrade the SSD from 128 to 256 for about $33, or all the way up to 512 for around 50 Keep in mind the prices for these vary day to day. If you want to be really nitpicky, you can sell your old parts for a little bit of extra money, uh, so that way the upgrades end up costing less. So at $250, is this the laptop for you? Well, I can't say. It totally depends on your uses. But what I can say is that you're definitely getting some significant value with this device considering the price tag. I mean, it's a whole functioning laptop that will handle your basic tasks like email, online shopping, typing papers, even Microsoft Office, and more. On top of that, it has a fairly decent build quality. It's totally fingerprint resistant, the keyboard functions well, and it's backlit, and the bezels are minimal. Honestly, in my opinion, you're really getting a lot for just 250. So if you've been a subscriber to my channel, you'll know that I have made videos showcasing the 7th gen iPad as a laptop alternative for students. The 7th gen is currently 250 right now uh, and may go back up to 329, but I want to talk about that for a second. As far as I'm concerned, the value you're getting with this $250 Asus is on par with the $250 7th gen iPad for a few reasons, and it's mostly based off of trade-offs. So on the Asus, the screen is worse, but the display is overall larger. On the iPad, you'll have overall better performance but you're also giving up a lot of freedom. And then with the Asus, you have a great quality full-size keyboard, but with the iPad, you're gonna have to be spending uh, extra money out of pocket to get a keyboard, which probably won't function as well as this dedicated keyboard. I could really go on and on with comparisons like these, but you should be weighing the advantages and disadvantages of each one, so you'll know which one will better suit your needs. If you're on the fence between a really budget laptop like this and one of those iPads, drop a comment and I will do my best to help you decide which one to pick. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, make sure to leave that in the comments. And also, if you enjoyed
enjoy tech and like saving money, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Also, if you've already been a subscriber of mine, I really want to deeply appreciate each and every one of you for helping me hit the milestone of 1,000 subscribers. And actually, since my last video, I've not only hit 1,000, but I've actually hit 2,000 now. I really don't have any words, and I really appreciate all of your guys' support. So thank you again, and as always, have an incredible day.